Hello everybody, hope you're having another blessed day. Now for today's video, I wanted us to think about the past. Because right now, we're in quarantine, we don't have you able to play stuff online. So I thought, why don't we just remember the good old days? And I thought, the best way to do that is to go back to where it began. So what I'm going to be doing in today's video is going to be going through our first pack. So to do that, you have to pack over here in case you don't know what the first pack is. It was the Legend of Blue Eyes for the TCG. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be basically going through every single card in this pack and then sharing a few my top five favorite cards and why they are my favorite cards, okay? Some of them is because, well, they're nostalgic to me, and some of them I actually do have some very fond memories of, which is why they're very important to me and why I love some of these cards still, okay? And most likely you're not going to be able to guess what my top five is, and I'm not going to be able to guess what your top five is. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. I actually want you to go to the comment section in this video and leave your own top five favorite cards from the set I'm going to be talking about today, Legend of Blue Eyes. I'd love to see if we have any cards that are similar, because I bet we will. But I'd love to see and see what, why some of the cards you think are your top five, and share with me why they are your favorite cards and why they are so important to you. Alright, so yeah, it's going to be a reminiscent video. And without further ado, check out the pack. So they have it pulled up here, and on the first card we have is Aqua Mador. Now I'm not I'm gonna butcher all these names and probably just gonna skip through a bunch of these, but we have Arm Mail, Arm Ninja, Armored Starfish, Basic Insect, Beast Fangs, Beaver Warrior, The Blue Eyes White Dragon, Book of Secrets, Celtic Guardian, Sharbin, the Fire Knight, Curse of Dragon, Dark Energy, Dark Grey, Dark Hole, Dark King of Abyss, Dark Magician, Dark Fire Dragon, Dark Word Thorns, that was a lot of darks. Dissolver Rock, okay. Dragon Caster Jar, Dragon Treasure, Dragonist the Wicked Knight, Drollin Lizard, Electro Whip, Enchanted Mermaid, Exodia the Forbidden One, Fiend Reflection Number Two. That's kind of weird that they had number two and they never released the number one before. I don't know. What's what's not think about that? Final Flame, Fire Grass, Fire Yaru, maybe Fissure. Flame Ghost, Flame Manipulator, Flame Swordsman, Flower Wolf, Follow Wind, Forest, Frenzied Panda, Fusionist, Gaia the Dragon Champion, Gaia the Fierce Knight, Giant Soldier of Stone, Goblin Secrets Remedy, Grave Keeper's Ghoul, Green Phantom King, Hanhan, Armor Knight, Hinatoma, I completely butchered that. I know I did for a fact. I don't know why I don't know this card off my head. Because it's in the anime and I love watching anime as a kid during this time. But yeah, Himotama. I think that sounded right. Himotama Soul. I actually never realized the similarities of these or why these have represented everything. The more you don't realize as a kid. Hitsomi Giant. Kamamusa the Blue Fang. Oh, the Blue Flame. Carbonola Warrior. I butchered that again. Awesome. King's Fog, Komotoko, Kurama, Lavas, Laser Cannon Armor, Left Arm Forbidden One, Left Leg of Forbidden One, Legendary Sword, Lesser Dragon, M Warrior Number One, M Warrior Number Two, Machine Conversion Factory, Mammoth Graveyard, Man Eater, Man Eater Bug, Masaki, the Legendary Swordsman, Meta Bat, Metal Dragon, Misa Suriyami, okay, <laughs> Monster Egg, Monster Reborn, but it was not that artwork, that's the Lost Ark, we have the regular artwork for the original set, don't know why that's there, Mountain, Mystical Elf, Mystical Moon, Mystical Sheet number two, a no card that some reason printed the number two of the monster without printing the number one first, don't know what Konami is thinking, but okay. Nimuriko, One-Eyed Chill Dragon, Petted Angel, Petted Dragon, Polymerization, Pot of Greed, Power of Kashanin, Raigeki, Raise Body Heat, Ray and Temperature, Reaper of the Cards, Red Medicine, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Remove Trap, Right Arm of Forbidden One, Right Leg of Forbidden One, Root of Water, Sandstone, Silver Bow and Arrow, Silver Fang, Skull Red Bird, Skull Servant, 
Whew, that's the first number of cards. Now I got the last, I think like 30 cards. Let's kind of scroll back to the top quick and get through them. Sogan, Skid Old Sparks, Spike Cedra, Spirit of the Harp, Steer Ogre Grotto number one, Stop Defense, Succubus Knight, Swords of a Villain Light. I don't think we have that kind of artwork, because, you know, cleavage. Thank you, uh, TCG, for censoring everything. Terror the Terrible, The Fifteenth Grave, Fury Sea King, Trap Hole, Trihorn Dragon, Trier of Nightmare, Tripwire Beast, Turtle Tiger, Two Mouth Dark War, Two Prong Attack, Typhoon, Yumi, Yrabi, Fire Germs, Violet Crystal, Wasteland, Witty Phantom, and last one. Yummy. So yeah, so that was every single card that was released in Legend of Blue Eyes, the first TCG pack we had. That was 126 cards. Now for the second part of this video, I'm not going to share for you my top five favorite cards from this pack. And at the same time, before we get into it, if you want to go down to the comment section and leave your own top five, do it at this time. I'd love to check them out after I post this video. All right, so I have to start out. It's not going to be a single one of these cards on this last page. We're just going to have to go to the first page to find my number five card. And my number five card, if you can guess, based on what my favorite deck currently is, and the card I have used previously is Carabonala Warrior. I definitely butchered that name. That's perfectly fine. This is a level four warrior monster that basically uses M Warrior 1 and M Warrior 2 as a fusion summon polarization to get out. And back then, it probably wasn't really that good of a card. It only has 1,500 attack, and you can normally summon usually some cards stronger than this. But why I literally like this card, even in today's Mana for Dark Warriors, is one, I could summon it with Instant Fusion. Another thing is, though, it was an effect monster, so let me get over cards such as, like, Ghost or something that tried to destroy my cards, or some kind of form fan. I can't remember what it was. So there was some card out there that kind of destroyed or took away my effect monster. I know Sky Strikers were an example, with the whole, uh, what was that called? Yeah, Widow Anger, you used to be able to take my monsters, effect monsters. This card, I'm pretty sure, was a goat against that, and it couldn't take my monster. It was nice. Now, the reason I like this card still is because it's level 4. You can see my, like, my Dark Warrior Kaliuga, I just need two level 4s to go into Utopia, Utopia Double. So this was the perfect Warrior Extender to either use with two Warriors to make a solo day, or two level 4s to get into my Utopia Double. And for that reason, that's why it's my top number 5. Only because I haven't really used it that much. But I have used it previously in my Dark Order decks when I played at my locals before, well, locals went away for a while. So, yeah, so that's my number five. Now, let's see, let me show you my number four. Number four is a good old card that everyone knows the fears when they ever see a player playing it. And it's going to include all five pieces, of course. And that's going to be Exodia Forbidden One for my number four spot. I remember when I first saw Exodia Forbidden One, it was one I played with my friends as kids. And he somehow had all those cards. I know where he gone. Had messed up real look with the packs. But I remember he actually used to technically set his deck to try to get Exoda in like three or less turns. Yeah. Back then we didn't care much about cheating, and I let him do it for a second slot. Okay. And turns out I actually lost every game because of that. But yeah, even in today's meta, Exoda is always one of those cards that pop. That anytime it gets popped out, people always are mind blown or something like that. And it never seems to really die. It's not as consistent as used to be, and people are not taking it to regionals or making it to Nationals or Exodia. But still a fun deck that has tons of potential. This would be a funny cheese thing, and this would obliterate your opponent out of nowhere. It always has a great laugh at the end of the game. Okay? So that's my number four. Now, for my number three card, you're not going to be able to guess it. This has nothing to do with how I played Yu-Gi-Oh! This is actually has to do with a memory I had as a kid. Okay? And the card I'm thinking of is Petit Dragon, or Petit Dragon. A very small dragon known for its vicious attacks. It wasn't the vicious attacks that still had it linger in my heart. It was how I had this card as a little kid when I was in elementary school. Now, when I first got into Yu-Gi-Oh, this is one of the first cards I got. Okay, it wasn't the first card, but it was in the first couple of packs I got. And something I always love to do is share the cards I got from the pack with my parents. Or mostly my mom, since my dad wasn't around. But I love to share this card with, well, my mom. And she always pointed out this card, talking about how she was so cute and over and she loved that card. And I always brought joy to my eye and always try to keep it with my stuff. I love having a card that my mom loved in my set of cards, okay? And for that reason, that's why I still love Petit Dragon. It was one of the first cards that my mom said she loved, and for that reason, I loved myself, okay? So that is number three. 
And number two, it also has to do with really fond memories. Okay, nothing to do with family this time. But it has to do with some of my friends. So my number two card is Guy of the Fierce Knight. Now this three has nothing to do with the card itself, but mainly the picture. Now for Guy of the Fierce Knight, I actually have kind of a puzzle picture frame kind of thing that I got from one of my friends, and that all came apart because one of my friends, when we had all our friends over, we actually hosted like a mini tourney at his house. And the prizes was basically puzzles, puzzle picture frames of different monsters. I ended up getting second place, and I was able to get Guy the Fierce Knight as well my prize. I didn't get first place, which was a blue eyes white dragon, which would have been awesome. But it still is really fun memory for me for Guy the Fierce Knight because it reminds me of the first time I actually played a Yugo tourney of all my friends at the same time. We had basically Swiss. That's two out of three, and we played like eight different people. It was insane. I loved it. Okay. I feel like third place made a giant soldier stone as a puzzle piece. But it didn't matter. I was just so happy to get one of these things. And I still have it in my room. And I may share it in the previous video or a future video, whatever. But there was such a good memory I have when I first was able to play with all my friends at the same time. Okay. For that reason, it's my number two. Now, you can probably guess already what my number one is. Because it is going to be the cover card for the pack. Okay. And you may think that's kind of cheating because, well, Blue Eyes Red Dragon is Blue Eyes Red Dragon. But also because of how, again, with memories I had as childhood of this card. This thing was basically currency as a kid, and everyone had that experience. Blue Eyes Red Dragon was basically $5 to everyone else, so it was worth any other card no matter what it was, okay? And that was the main kid, at least in my community, that always tried to get all the Blue Eyes Red Dragons. Because, well, we wasn't able to buy them online. You couldn't buy the packs anymore, so these are really hard to get in my community, okay? I wasn't going to regionals or locals because I didn't have those when I was a kid, okay? But I always try to get what, and if someone else some got a Blue Eyes Red Dragon, I always try to trade to get no matter what it was. And at a point, I think I may have owned every single Blue Eyes White Dragon in my town. Okay, I had like 50 of these cards, okay? Now, I will say they're not in the best conditions now because as a kid, you know, we didn't really know what sleeves were. But you know, it's still such a great memory I've had. I, knew, I didn't even play it in the game, I just love collecting it. I just put them in binders, and I still have a binder of probably about almost 100 Blue Eyes White Dragons I had as a kid. And I still collect them to this day. Because this reminds me of memory as a kid. How I always went out to talk to my friends and trade with my friends after duels, during duels, always trying to get the Blue Eyes White Dragons. And I do remember I made some really bad trades. But you know, it was all worth it for the fun and game. And kind of sparks the whole power and love for Yu-Gi-Oh! that I still have of today. Okay, this is one of the starting pieces. So yeah, that is my top 5 favorite cards. And also my discussion to go through quickly of Legend of Blue Eyes. The first TCG pack, TCG pack in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And I hope you enjoyed this. And also, in the comment section, I hope you did go down and leave your top 5 favorite cards from this 126 cards. I'd love to see your top 5 list. And also, while you're making the top 5 list, also share for some of the cards if you want why you're your, they're your favorite cards. You can just say because you're using your meta decks right now. Like, Blue Eyes is still a decent card. You're playing Blue Eyes. It could be something like some reason why Aqua Medora is your favorite card. I don't know why it's your favorite card, but I'd love it for you to explain and at least tell me why it's your favorite card. Okay? And with that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like in the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Guys, that tells me that you enjoy this kind of content and this content I'm producing for you guys and helps me grow my channel. Now, like always, I hope the rest of your week is blessed. I hope we see you all in the next video. And with that, I'm out. See ya.